بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Brothers and sisters, welcome to this episode of Learn Deen Daily on how to become a productive Muslim. Inshallah, in this session, we are discussing about social productivity. And if you are following our slides, we shall go through these one after the other to cover our session. In the first slide here, we are mentioning about a high level understanding of what we will cover during the session, defining the terms, social productivity in Islam, goals and objectives, what we mean by social, and finally call for action. Let's begin with defining the terms social and productivity. According to wikipedia.com, social refers to interaction of people with each other and their collective coexistence. And productivity is commonly defined as a ratio between the output and the input. In other words, it measures how efficiently our efforts as inputs are being utilized to produce an effective output. Our next slide is on social productivity in Islam. So what does Islam relate to on social productivity? The three things I like to mention here. To begin with, Islam is a way of life. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Al-Imran, Surah number 3, Ayah number 19, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الدين عند الله الإسلام Verily, indeed, the religion in the sight of Allah is Islam. With that said, it prescribes a perfect and complete social system and provides guidance to achieve the best results while being socially active in society. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sent his last and final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as an example for mankind to follow and has preserved his social life for us to take lessons from. In fact, in Islam, most of the ibadat, most of the worships are related to social productivity and have a tremendous impact on human lives. Just from the five pillars of Islam, three out of five pillars are dealing with the social elements, are dealing with increasing the productivity of a person, of a Muslim in his social life. If we look at Salah, it brings societies closer removes any types of differences and promotes equality and this happens five times each day. Zakah, a social responsibility fulfilled at its best through compulsory charity if one is eligible and can afford to do so. Hajj, a global meeting point for societies from across the globe that come together to understand and reflect on their true purpose in life which is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. On to our next slide, goals and objectives. We need to set for ourselves the goals and clear objectives of learning and understanding how we can be socially productive in our own lives. We begin with understanding why and what should be the intention behind this and how we should directly link this to the very purpose why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us. So our intention is only and only to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he created us as social beings and he did not leave us without a purpose. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in Surah Zariyat ayah number 56 وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ And I have created not the jinns and the humans except that they should worship me. And therefore we do go about doing our social activities uh, in our own lives, not to show off to people, not to earn or to please somebody else, but rather with a clear intention to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, understanding the purpose of why we've been created, which is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second is to keep in mind that we are here to seek something, and that is barakah. 
which is the missing element, as I like to call it, in our lives. Today, modern studies focus on human productivity in all its aspects. Islam goes beyond that by including the term called barakah, which is about maximizing the impact of our output. Barakah, my brothers and sisters, is the blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How Allah multiplies the rewards when it is done with the right intention and only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah mentions in Surah Al-A'raf, Surah number 7, Ayah number 96, وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَهْلَ الْقُرَىٰ آمَنُوا وَاتَّقَوْا لَفَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ لَفَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ بَرَكَاتٍ مِّنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَلَكِنْ وَلَكِنْ كَذَّبُوا فَأَخَذْنَاهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ And if only the people of the cities had believed and feared Allah, had believed and feared Allah, we would have opened upon them blessings from the heavens and the earth, but they denied the messengers, so we seized them for what they were earning. In this ayah, there are two important things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings our attention to. One, Allah says, and if only the people of the cities had believed and feared Allah. So the word used here is taqwa. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would open upon them blessings from the heavens and the earth. They would reap the blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on account of having the belief in Allah and the taqwa of Allah. So that brings us to our next point, which is taqwa. And I call it the secret sauce because this is what helps us achieve barakah in our lives. And remember what we mentioned, barakah is what maximizes the impact of our output. Whatever action that we do, if we need to be extremely impactful on our actions, on our output, then that needs to have the secret sauce of taqwa. And what is taqwa? Taqwa is one of the basic, most important ingredients for social success in Islam. It means doing that which Allah has enjoined and avoiding that which He has forbidden. In several ayat of the Quran, you know, relating to the social aspects, He makes mention of taqwa that needs to be there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya O mankind, we have created you from a male and a female and made you into nations and tribes that you may know one another. Verily, the most honorable of you with Allah is that believer who has taqwa, who has the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Verily, Allah is all-knowing and all-aware. In another ayah from Surah Nisa, Surah number 4, ayah number 1, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the social aspect, He says, Ya ayyuha an-nasu attaqu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahidatin wa khalaqa minha wa khalaqa minha zawjaha wa batha minhuma rijalan kathiran wa nisa'a وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا O mankind, be dutiful to your Lord, who created you from a single person, 
Adam alayhi salam, and from him he created his wife Hawa alayhi salam, and from them both he created many men and women, and fear Allah through whom you demand your mutual rights, and do not cut the relations of the womb of kinship, surely Allah is an all watcher over you. We will proceed with the next slide. What I've picked up when I was preparing for the talk and I was thinking how would I be able to explain this session uh, in a way that can relate to our lives, especially when we are exposed to modern societies. Going to abbreviations.com, I found each one of these have a role to play in Islam. And Islam guides us on some of these very important uh, subjects. And in fact, you will see this from the very first one here, which is social, and it starts with S. And the first one is sincere, truthfulness and honesty. Being truthful is one of the necessities of a human society, one of the virtues of human behavior and brings great benefit, whilst the opposite of that is lying and it is one of the major elements of corruption in human society and the cause of the destruction of social structure and ties, one of the most evil features of bad conduct and causes widespread harm. Hence Islam commanded truthfulness and forbade lying. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentions in Surah At-Tawbah Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu Allah wa kunu ma'al sadiqeen O you who believe, be afraid of Allah, have the consciousness of Allah and be with those who are true in word and deeds. In a hadith narrated by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu who said that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said you must be truthful for truthfulness leads to righteousness and righteousness leads to paradise a man will keep speaking the truth and striving to speak the truth until he will be recorded with Allah as a siddiq speaker of the truth and beware of telling lies for lying leads to immorality and immorality leads to hellfire. A man will keep telling lies and striving to tell lies until he is recorded with Allah as a liar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who are sincere and those who are truthful. In social, the next letter is O and it stands for open. Open, communication, which is key for us to thrive in our social lives. One of the things to which I like to bring to your attention is the fact that in most people, we find that they resort to an easier way, which is actually one of the social evils in society, when there's something wrong that is being told to them or something that they do not feel was supposed to be said and they feel bad about it. So instead of communicating openly with the brother or the sister, rather they resort to one of the social evils in our society, which is backbiting. My brothers and sisters, backbiting is one of the greatest sins in Islam and this is what we need to avoid completely and the best way to do that is to be able to communicate well and clear our hearts Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentions in Surah Al-Hujurat ayah number 12 Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu jtanibu kathiran min al-dhan inna ba'd al-dhan ithn wa la tajassasu wa la yaghtab ba'dukum ba'da ayuhibbu ahadukum an yakula lahma akhihi mayta فَكَرِهْتُمُوهُ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ O you who believe, avoid much suspicion. Indeed, some suspicions are sins. And spy not, neither backbite one another. Would you like to eat the flesh of his dead brother? You would hate it. So hate backbiting. And fear Allah. Verily, Allah is the one who accepts repentance and is most merciful. To understand what backbiting really means, once, as reported by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Do you know what is backbiting? The companions, they replied and he said, Allah and his messenger know best. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam clarified to them and said, To mention your brother in a way he dislikes. To mention your brother in a way he dislikes. 
it was said what do you think if what I said about him is true Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said if what you say about him is true it is backbiting it is backbiting and if it is not true then it is slander which is worse Asma bint Yazid radiallahu anha reported the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said whoever defends the flesh of his brother from backbiting it will be a duty upon Allah to free him from the hellfire. The third letter in social is C and that stands for collaborative. Cooperate and coexist. As social beings, we always depend on each other for our needs and hence we need to learn to collaborate and to coexist. In one of the ayat of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides us to cooperate with each other. وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى وَلَا تَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ شَدِيدُ الْعِقَابِ And cooperate in righteousness and piety, but do not cooperate in sin and aggression, and fear Allah, indeed Allah is severe in penalty. Now one of the greatest deeds of piety by means of which barakah, the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may be sought is actually to uphold the ties of kinship. Now in a social circle, our first social circle is our family, is our kinship, is our blood relations. And then the circle moves out to the second circle which is our relatives, our neighbors. And the next circle is when we have our colleagues, our friends, our people that we meet in the masajid, people that we meet in our society, people that we meet in the marketplace. And then the circle goes much beyond strangers that we interact with at one point or the other in our life. So in the social circle, the first circle is the most important circle. And that is that if someone is able to maintain good relationship with, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised barakah in their lives. It was narrated that Anas bin Malik radiallahu anhu who said, I heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, whoever would like his risk, his provision to be increased and his life to be extended should uphold the ties of kinship. So this is an extremely important aspect that can help us remain productive in our social life, which is to maintain good relationship with the kinship. The fourth one is the letter I in social. I for interested. In order to be productive, we need to be interested in benefiting people in the best way possible. Islam teaches us that the best of people are those who are the most beneficial to people. Jabir radiallahu anhu reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, The believer is friendly and befriended, for there is no goodness in the one who is neither friendly nor befriended. The best of the people are those who are the most beneficial to people. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, The best of people are those that bring most benefit to the rest of mankind. And the best of the deeds that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directs us to, as he mentions in Surah Al-Ali Imran, Surah number 3 and number 104, وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَيَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ let there arise out of you a group of people inviting to all that is good, enjoying what is right and forbidding what is wrong, and they are the ones who are the most successful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in another ayah, كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ نُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ 
you are the best of people evolved for mankind and joining what is right forbidding what is wrong and believing in Allah so the best benefit that we can provide to people is to help them to be guided to the true path the next one the fifth one in social is the letter A and it stands for authentic authenticity the more you know what you really believe the more authentic you will be and the more self-confidence you will have self-confidence my brothers and sisters is an acquired characteristic that a Muslim needs to know how to acquire Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا Indeed, he succeeds who purifies his own self and indeed he fails who corrupts his own self Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Allah la yughayyiru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayyiru ma bi anfusihim where Allah will not change the condition of a people as long as they do not change their state themselves the last letter in social is likable being liked comes from one of the key elements which is having good manners Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the hadith I have only been sent to perfect good characteristics it was narrated that Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu said the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked about that which will admit most people in paradise he said fear of Allah and good attitude he used to often make this supplication and he taught us Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min munkarat al-akhlaqi wal-a'mali wal-ahwa' O Allah, I seek refuge in you from reprehensible conduct, deeds and desires Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu reported in another hadith that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said you will not enter paradise until you have faith and you will not have faith until you love each other shall I show you something that if you did you would love each other and that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said spread peace between yourselves so if you want to be likable one of the key good manners that you can take from the life of the Prophet Wasallam is to be the one who spreads the salam. The Prophet Wasallam said, those who are nearest to Allah are they who are the first to give a salutation. So when you meet people, you're the first one to greet them by saying, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Anas bin Malik radiallahu anhu reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to me, Dear son, when you enter your house, say Assalamu alaikum to your family, for it will be a blessing upon you and to your family. So you remember, if you want to be extremely productive and achieve the barakah, the blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this is one of the things that you need to bring and adopt in your social life, which is that when you meet anyone that you know and people that you do not know, but you say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A man asked the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which act in Islam is the best? He replied, to give food and to greet everyone whether you know or you do not know with this we come to the end of the session the three things that you need to remember and this will become our call for action which is to understand that we should realize that as Muslims we need to be extremely productive so we need to wisely choose the way of life of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam which was extremely productive and by adopting his life by adopting his example by taking him as our role model we will remain extremely productive now what are we setting out for is to make sure that we find out the missing element which is missing in our lives today which is the barakah which is the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you must have the taqwa of Allah the consciousness and the fear of Allah in every action in your social life and that is going to eventually make you extremely socially productive and I really wish for all of you the success and productivity in your social lives وَأَخِيرُ الدَّعْوَانَ أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته